Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ahu Kekahu Cardwell, and here we are today on the island of Oahu, and I'll tell you this, we have a fascinating guest on the show, so let's go on over here and meet him. Hanalei, aloha. Aloha. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hanalei Hopfei, did I say your name right? Hopfei. Hopfei, yes. Hanalei Hopfei. Yes. And Hanalei, tell us where we are today. This is beautiful. Uh, actually, uh, we're at the site of uh, Pokai Bay Beach Park. In Waianae, huh? In Waianae, yes. Uh, overlooking what a beautiful ocean here at Pokai Bay. And up ahead, we also have our uh, Kuilio, Lo Kuilio Loa Heiau. Wow. So part of uh, some of the projects that I've been working on over the years. Wow. So, Hanalei, we wanted to have you on Voices of Truth today be mm -hmm. for several reasons. Because you've got a lot going on out here. Oh, yeah. But right. one of the things is you've lived here a long time, yes? Yeah, like forever. <laughs> like forever, like your whole life. Right. So you were born here. Absolutely. And you've never lived anywhere else but here. Well, I lived in Macau for a short time, but basically I still, you know, here in Waianae, Pokai Bay. This is where your roots are. Right. Wow. So let's talk about what you're involved in. Uh, you're involved in helping with the homeless people or houseless people here. Yes. And you're involved also in helping to restore things like this heiau, which is right ahead of us that we're walking towards. Yes. And what else sure. are you involved in? Uh, well, right now also working on uh, Makua. There's a lot of issues uh, lately uh, over a lot of people leaving a lot of trash and burning pallets on the beach and stuff like that. Looking at uh, actually a long-term uh, stewardship and actually well, eventually reclaiming our land. And going back to Hawaiians, it also connected to Makua on the Mauka side. So if we do a good job doing stewardship on the Makai side, then we can prove ourselves that we're capable and we can take care of our own kuleana, our own affairs in Waianae Moku. And then uh, hopefully we can get the land also returned back to the families that were once displaced uh, from Makua back in the early 40s and maybe even the late 30s. Wow, so Hanalei, you're talking about land management systems that were go back way to ancient times. Yes, yeah? yes. And, 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 re, and doing that and restoring things that way. Right, it's actually, I uh, have a big job ahead of me, but it's a kako thing, I actually uh, trying to bring back the uh, ahupua system or the kunahiki system, mm -hmm. which is you know pretty much uh, land and resource management. Mm -hmm. So I got elected to do the job. Uh, it's been uh, quite interesting and challenging, but I embrace it. And so that's part of the reason why I work with the homeless because of uh, all these kind of issues because of the federal government being you know, occupying land and states being occupying land, stuff like that. Ivi Kupuna over there that needs to be protected, the alkaline ponds over there with Opai Ula, things like that. That's why I also kind of uh, working up Mauka, uh, Ka'ala, uh, so we try to get the water released uh, to back down to Wainai to help uh, strengthen the aquifer. Because right now, I don't care, I guess all over the world pretty much water is an issue. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing over here, water is an issue, so I'm trying to get more water. And part of the thing is uh, we're bringing back the balance here in our ecosystem. So that's why I'm also working with the homeless over there, because we train those guys over there, the Pu'unua, we can plant limu, things like that. That's why we need the water to come back so we can create that uh, salt, the brackish water, the fresh water mixed with the salt, and which will allow the limu to grow, also help our fish to spawn. We'll be actually recreating the estuaries, things like that, the nurseries for our fish and all that so as part of my job is to provide for our people and and food sustenance so mm. that's why I'm pretty much into food uh, sovereignty so we're getting you know, all kind of different projects working from Maku to Makai because that's the way Kupunas did it so that's why I'm pretty much all over the creation from up the mountain to the ocean and you know everything in between. You said a word a moment ago that I want to introduce to our viewers and have mm -hmm. you explain that word is Konohiki. Yes. What is a konohiki? Because that's that's what you are. You're one of those. Yes. Yeah. Actually, konohiki is a a chief. Uh, actually, I come from a long line of chiefs. Uh, actually, I'm higher ranking than that. Uh, but, but what is the duty of a konohiki? Uh, well, to be a manager, land management, uh -huh. and I, I realized that we do need that. So I took the kuleana, and to, I know it's a big job, but uh, somebody needs to do it. Mm -hmm. So I took the kuleana, I, I think I had some help from the other side, you know, Keako and my kupunas. Uh, I never planned none of this stuff. It's just unfolding and manifesting as, as I go along and working with people, developing relationship. So they're kind of launching this new thing. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it, that we have the Ahamoku uh, Council. So actually I'm forming the Ahamoku Council. So uh, as a konihiki, I pretty much, pretty much work with all the other guys. Uh, so I've selected uh, over a period of time, uh, 
Ahupua representatives. So each Ahupua out here in Waianae, we have a representative and then they work in their community. So they're pretty much like talking chief. Mm -hmm. So they represent their people in their village or uh, Ahupua. Mm -hmm. And then they all, we all work together and try to, you know, make sense of this whole thing and manage and try to make uh, uh, Waianae Moku a uh, better place for one and all. Wow. So Hanley, what I'm hearing is there's a very specific and uh, elaborate hierarchy Yes. in terms of management from the very top all the way down to the Maka Aina Na, the commoners, yes? Right, right. And the Konohiki, if I understand what you're saying, is the one that is responsible for a specific area of land and managing that land and managing the people on that land so it's everything is well taken care of and everything is interactive. Right. And everything and everybody gets fed rather than everything and everybody dying. Right. Wow. Absolutely. You're right, that is a big job. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a cocoa thing because I can't do it myself. Right. As, you know, try to protect the environment. Right. Uh, also, you know, so we got it, we uh, kind of created, we came up with this thing called Makai Watch. So we see people uh, violating and uh, they're not doing the right thing, like, you know, taking crabs or lobsters with eggs or uh, catching fish that is uh, under the age of maturity. So, uh -huh. so they're not in a reproduction age. Mm -hmm. So you gotta get people to be more responsible and pay attention to those things like that. So that's, cause if they keep catching fish right now before a reproduction age, they're gonna get nothing left to reproduce, right? Yeah. So that's why we're trying to bring all that kind back to, uh, through education. So plan on working with the schools, cause you know, kids uh, that's our future leaders. So we gotta educate them, you know, so kind of you know, just help each other, yeah? yeah. You gotta help them, they help me. And it's a, you know, it's a mutual thing and we all, you know, we all benefit from it, yeah. Wow. Uh, so, Hanalei, can you show us here, can you point out to us the area of land that you manage? Uh, not that end. <laughs> Only that end, you cannot even see them. So, all the way down from that mountain ridge uh, to down there? Actually, no. Actually, uh, kind of point. Yeah? Yeah. All the so way up there? You cannot see it, yeah, from here. So, beyond that ridge? Yes, absolutely. Wow. The land management done properly sounds like that area will come back to its normal state and really flourish right. and it'll be growing and putting out the you know maximum amount of food whether it's on the land on the aina right. or in the ocean right like that so, so i work with other you know practitioners and you know experts like i'm no expert you know all these different things uh but i'm smart enough to know those guys though and I, and I work with them yeah as part of you know management the, these guys are you know part of the resource yeah they're experts in their own little areas right like we have eric yeah. Enos, he's taking care of ka'ala yeah up here and, yeah, I'm yeah. Up ka'ala, I yeah work with them and we're also uh working on a project uh while trying to get uh more land so therefore we can also request for more water it's a kind mm -hmm. of case of a supply and demand so if we had all the guys working on land so i can ask them Water, water Supply Commission that, hey, we need more water, give us back some of our water. Yeah, so, you know, that brings up uh, uh, an interesting point, Hanalei, which is uh -huh. the name of the place that we are at right now is Waianae. Yes. And W-A-I, Y, is the Hawaiian word for fresh water. Right. And yet, where is the fresh water? Samaoka, <laughs> Kala. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so as part of the plan is we actually bring them down here, yeah? Yeah. We should actually increase our food stock, yeah? Yeah, but long time ago, there was a lot more fresh water here than there is today, yeah? Oh, absolutely. I remember when I, I mean, uh, in my younger days, I walk up the valley, you could just, you know, reach down the side, the flume just ran down, and uh, people were more responsible back then. They didn't, you know, throw trash in the water and whatever. Uh, so we used to be able to scoop up water, whatever, and, you know, drink water and going up in you know, the valley, go pick plums and whatever, you know, mountain apples and what have you, you know, whatever we can gather in the forest. What happened to the water? Well, the plantations kind of took over, and then after they took over, well, the plantations, uh, that died out, uh, but they seem to think that they own the water. Then next thing you know, the, the state water water supply kind of captured the water and kind of started uh, like capping wells, things like that. So pretty much controlling the water situation. Uh, in some cases, I think that's good because some people, if they, Going to the, the well, whatever that can also contaminate the water we are really drinking. Yeah, so you gotta be careful with that, so you don't contaminate the water and affect the whole community. Right, right, right. But years ago, this all started when the plantations diverted the water. Yeah. Yes. For their own purposes of growing right. pineapple, sugar cane, right, and all those crops that are no longer right, no mostly longer. a sugar cane out there in Hawaii. Because a lot of people think that you know you get Hawaiian names or you do Hawaiian things that makes you Hawaiian, but actually that's not true. What makes you actually Hawaiian is your Hawaiian values and philosophy of Kupuna. 
Hawaiian values and philosophy. Yeah. So what are the Hawaiian values of a... Well, aloha aina, <laughs> aloha everything. <laughs> Love of land? Yeah. yeah, well, everything, kupuna t-shirt, everything has mana, yeah? Even a pohaku, yeah? yeah? Can give you life, also can give you death, yeah? Yeah. So everything has mana, yeah? Yeah, everything has power, yes. everything is alive. Right. Respect for everything that's alive. Right, right. Don't harm it, you take care of it, it right. takes care of you. Exactly. Yeah, so what's the philosophy that you live by of a konohiki? Oh. Uh, philosophy is all uh, uh, doing the right thing and uh, also uh, living by Pono, yeah? Mm -hmm. Living the right way. Right. Wow. Wow. Sometimes difficult to do, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times you, uh, you know, wrestle with emotions, things like that, and, you know, try to make sense of everything that's happening, uh, ever since we was occupied, stuff like that, but still maintain a uh, good sense of balance and maintain focus and yeah, Pono, yeah. We're walking towards uh, Heiau up here, huh? Yes. Tell us about this. Uh, this is a uh, uh, ancient heiau uh, built by our ancestors. Actually, it's uh, used for navigation. The name of the heiau, the original name was uh, Kani Ilio Loa. Uh, the point is named Kani Ilio Loa, Kani Ilio Loa. And the uh, heiau actually, uh, when Kamehameha, I guess, conquered the islands, he rededicated the heiau to his war god, Ku. So that's why now the heiau has the name Ku, Ku Ilio Loa, which means, you know, the long dog of Ku. In ancient times, this heiau was used for navigation. Yes. And so, actually, it's still used by, uh, by uh, navigators today. So when you say used b uh, for navigation, meaning it would be used for people on the ocean to navigate by, or people would come up here to learn the art of navigation? Yeah, learn the art of navigation, also study the stars, constellations. Mm -hmm. Actually, a certain time of year on, on this heiau, you can actually see the Southern Cross that hangs over Tahiti. Really? Yeah. Wow. From this point. Pretty wow. interesting. Yeah. Follow the Kuomo, the, which is a constellation of stars that goes and uh, one, one has the Big Dipper. And the stars go and then actually it goes and points to the, the Southern Cross. Wow. Which we still have a connection with our Tahitian cousins. Yes. In fact, that's where my ancestors uh, arrived from. They arrived in Hawaii back in the 11, 1200s AD. Your ancestors? Yes. This, this heiau is Vahipana, sacred mm. place, yeah? Yes. Wow. So can we walk up here or not? Sure. Okay, yeah. let's go. Hanalei, right up here is where people would be uh, schooled in the art of navigation and wayfaring according to the stars. Yes. And why this spot? Why not some other place? Uh, because it's actually like a koa too, yeah? Kind of stands out. So like we can see from point to point, like Mauna Lahilai is a koa that's also another uh, lena. So it juts out into the ocean is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Over here and also Miley, uh -huh. the mountain over there. So. Uh, it's pretty much like strategic, so uh, Kupuna could com communicate. Also, we use this place for spotting fish mm -hmm. because of the elevation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was used for many things here. Yes, probably uh, goes back to like the 1100s, as far as I know, probably even further. Wow. So well over a thousand years, 1500 years. Oh, absolutely. Years. Yeah, yeah. What about you know like uh, a thousand years ago, 800 years ago, 1500 years ago? A lot of people living here. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a village and definitely village lifestyle. And it was over here, it was like pretty much a coconut grove. And a lot more water, a lot more food, a lot more people. So this area was able to sustain and, and, and feed a lot, a lot of people out here. Actually, uh, Ka'ala is known as a bread basket of Wainai Moku. Actually, it was able to produce enough food to feed the whole Moku. Wow. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to achieve now. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal. How many people lived here in ancient times, do you figure? Thousands, thousands. They all pretty much are spread out there yeah, from Maka to Maka, yeah, mm -hmm. depending, depending what your line of uh, work was. Yeah. yeah. So they were from here, all the way up to the, all the way up to the mountains in the valleys. Yes. Yeah. So thousands of people lived here. Yes. And they got their food from the ocean. Boat. And they got their food from the land, the the lo'i, the taro. Right. And right. everything in between. Right. The kupunas would come down from Maka and they would trade uh, with the fishermen down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you plan for here really does take it back according to the old ways and old principles. Yes, that's part of the Hawaiian, you know, values there. Yeah, which is the most productive in terms of food, and it sounds to me like it's a whole lot less work. Well, yeah, well, it's a whole lot less work too when you work with everybody. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, Hanalei, I noticed as we were walking up here, mm -hmm. there were along the shore here some what we I might call memorials, right? Yes. And so those are put up. Those are put up very recently. 
Uh, yeah, I say within, uh, I guess, the last decade or so. Okay, and what? Are, who put those up and why? Uh, individual families, I guess, uh, because of sentiment. Because uh, of people that were died here, or? No, it's not actually a graveyard where you know actually people died and you buried them there. Actually, it's more like I said, sentimental. Uh, like for myself, uh, my uncles, cousins, whatever that has already crossed over. Uh, you know, we spread the ashes outside here, mm -hmm. and then when they come here, yeah, sit down and uh, talk to them and visit. Uh, but a lot of these guys, I guess, they need more visual thing, visual stuff. So I guess they have their crosses or whatever, so they can remember. Because maybe you know, auntie or cousin, whatever, uh, this might have been their favorite spot too mm -hmm. during their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So the family have their memorials over here, so they can come and memorial, you know, and give them flowers, whatever, to you know remember well, them. Can we walk down here and, and take a look at those? Sure. So people put those up here, but I mean, how long, how long are they supposed to stay, or will they ever come down? Uh, well, it's, it's not like uh, the roadside memorials where people actually die there. And, and those are, I think there's laws about that. I think they're supposed to stay up a, a month. And then uh, after that, uh, they can do it every year. Uh, but it's not supposed to be there like forever. And these over here, I think these guys are like thinking it's going to be forever. I noticed that's also happening in Makua Beach, which is not nice. Somebody's going to say, well, who gave me the, the right to remove them? Well, who gave you the right to put them? Yeah, but it's really not compatible with what's here, is it? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, here they are over here. So that's part of uh, correcting uh, Wainai's history yeah. and keeping it straight instead of people to start inventing and doing their own thing because that will eventually create chaos. And we cannot have chaos. Yeah, visual chaos and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, so these memorials, uh, actually, uh, I did a uh, presentation in neighborhood bar to notify people that actually uh, there's laws about this, about doing stuff like this. So actually, you're gonna put it out in our community newspaper to let the people know, to advertise it, to for them to come and uh, remove their pieces. And I don't want to find anybody because at that time, I guess they never know there was laws about it. So it'd be unfair to you know penalize them or anything to find them. But they have to remove it. The next step is if there is a need for something like this, because back in the day, Kupuna, we never need to do this kind of stuff. If we did these kind of things, we didn't have room to build highways, to build home, nothing. Kupuna is all over from Makwa to Makai. So, in terms of being buried, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So we, we don't do this kind. It's not Hawaiian. Hanalei, I know there's a lot of homeless people that live here in the Waianae area, yes? Yes. And I guess the first thing we should probably say is that homeless is really not the right word because they're houseless rather than homeless because right. Hawaii is their home, so exactly. they're home. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So they're houseless here. Right. And they've been living here quite a long time that way, huh? Right. What percentage of those are Hawaiian? Uh, most of them. Uh, yeah. Over 50 percent. Most all of them, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But... It's sad. It is sad. But that's the bad news. Right. The good news is you have a plan. The big plan is, is you have all this land here you manage and oversee, uh -huh. but you got to bring in a lot of people to help you. Right. And yet there's a lot of people out here who are houseless who are, you look at them and you go, well, here it's are my people. Yes. Yeah. yeah, here are my people. So now, I, you know, it's like a, like an empty book, so I get to fill in the pages. So, okay, you can, you can learn how to plant limo. It's, you know, it's okay for people to come and pick. Your job is to teach them how. Yeah, do the proper way to pick. And just take what you need for eat. Going back to that philosophy, just take what you need. No overfish, no overtake. Like, we got so much into capitalism. And people just, you know, take all the limo, take all the OPs. They don't care on the size, anything. They don't care how to take them. They rip them out, so nothing will grow back. So as part of, you know, proper management and education, you know, so that the, the houses people over there can work with them. And then actually they're going to be monitoring everything, the, the feds and all that. They eventually bring back like the old style of like Opelo fishing. So you go there because we have the feds out there. So we're going to reestablish the fish. So you can go out there, drop the big net. And then bring them all up and just go with the scoop net, take what you need, and let the rest go again. And then so every time you let go, you go catch, but you catch and you feed everybody in, uh, in, the, you know, in the, uh, the moku or whatever, the, uh, the, the shelter over there. So, so that's so, you know, all good. So that's actually now we're giving them kuleana, giving them jobs. So they're no longer, I guess, jobless because you have a job now. You have a kuleana. It's for them, for their benefit. Mm -hmm. and, and they also uh, gives them... Uh, I guess kind of like identity because they're not treated like outcasts. Yes. Uh, so they have, a, you know, everybody has a place in life and everybody, you know, has their mission. 
So these guys, I guess, you know, they have little obstacles right now, mm -hmm. uh, being financial, uh, which a lot of us guys are just struggling, and we're you know, pretty much like one paycheck away from being house itself. Sell. So, you know, we gotta be makaala and try to you know balance that thing like that. But uh, we cannot be selfish and not care about these other guys. For them guys trying to get jobs, it's hard because uh, what address they gonna use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. No house. Right, because everybody's, well, like if they need uh, help from whatever DSS, uh, they're going to ask you, well, you need an address where they're going to send you your checks or whatever paperwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have problems with that because uh, they, they don't have an actual address, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's kind of crazy, even trying to get water, they're trying to get water rights, so we're trying to get the meter put in, stuff like that. But there's a lot of obstacles from the city. So, and also, uh, guys are going to do, donate roll-offs to take care of the trash issue, but we need permits for that. Like, oh my God. Wow. There's so much obstacles. And they're trying to empower us Hawaiians, but then at the same time, they're knocking us down. Like, hello, <laughs> what's up with that? Yeah. yeah. So what's the answer to all that stuff? How do you solve that? Well, I'll keep getting in their face. <laughs> and keep letting them know, keep pushing the envelope. Yeah. Yeah, because they, well, we got to hold our legislators uh, accountable. You know, we vote them in and they have a job. They work for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, have them, you know, do their job. So, Hanley, the, were these skills that you had uh, all for a long time, or were they skills that once you accepted the position of Konohiki of this area, you realized, oh, wait a minute, I need to learn how to do this, I need to learn how to do this, and I need to learn how to do that? Uh, not really, because uh, you know, so Hawaiian Lifestyle, we pretty much did a lot of stuff ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much, uh, you, know, it's, you know, common knowledge. A lot of us guys grew up, you know, the, the old school, you know, I remember the days when we had the kerosene stove and kerosene lamps. Everybody's house, everybody's home smelled like kerosene. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And outhouses, everything like that. So, wow. So we, I know we came a long way. I do appreciate, you know, modern conveniences, but a lot of times, you know, we've been actually getting spoiled. Uh, so you sort of, you know, the easy life, yeah, that we forget about those that are uh, less fortunate. Hanley, what do you think this area could be and look like when it really gets going and fully developed according to what you guys are doing, plan to do? Uh, well, it'll be more beautiful than now. And I know a lot of people are angry, say it, because of occupation, things like that. So they kind of rebel against authority, state, city, what have you. Uh, yeah, that's kind of hard one to fix uh, because it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. But you know, try to still try to fix them and realize that, try to have these guys realize that the state don't live here, mm -hmm. the city don't live here, it's our community, we live here. Mm -hmm. So you can make your own heaven or you make your own hell. And don't blame them because those are just entities. And we're real living human beings with mm -hmm. real needs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so hopefully you can educate them so they realize that, that you know, we can work together. Like they destroy bathrooms, all kinds of stuff, these guys break up showers, any kind of stuff. They don't realize it's just making it harder on everybody to pay taxes and stuff. And it takes away from the rest of the community. Maybe I like the bachelor, maybe I like a decent toilet, you know, stuff like that. So kind of infringes on my rights and stuff like that. These guys, you know, going around, you know, acting properly, doing this kind of stuff like that. So part of the thing too, we're also looking at uh, managing our hukua, so we kind of uh, like police the areas. So make sure you also work with the younger generation stuff like so we can educate them. So and keep, uh, stop these guys from doing vandalizing and stuff like that. They're only hurting themselves, hurting the communities, hurting the future generations. Because we'd have more money on the table to have more improvements, more things, but we keep spending more money just fixing stuff and just trying to keep up. It's not gonna happen. You know, Voices of Truth airs throughout Hawaii, but it also airs yes. around the world, right. many, many places. Right. And I'll bet you right now, somebody maybe on the other side of the world is watching you and me right now. Uh -huh. And they may be in charge of a place Kind of like this, but far, far away. Right, and right. they may be looking at the same responsibilities and go, oh my goodness, this is way too big a job for me. I don't think I can do this. What What would you say to them? Work with your people. Yeah, work with your, you know, whatever leaders, whoever wants to, mm -hmm. whoever feels the need that, you know, we have to make some changes. Work with those guys, because they're at least you like-minded, yeah? So it'd be mm -hmm. easier to work with those guys than working with guys that always been training negatives and negatives, you know? So. So we're trying to build from something positive, yeah, and you cannot keep turning around. So in other words, it can be done. If you focus and keep working at it, yes. and build your crew, it can be done. Yes. Wow, wow. But it'll deter the uh, determination and you know persistence. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. Which is part of what I do, Maui, yeah, because actually I'm an artist, 
So I actually I teach for income and outcome. Mm. So, uh, so like I work with the Pohaku, I teach how to make in Pohaku kuiai, Papa kuiai thing like part of you know sustainability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, stuff like that. So educating our people. So I'm able to use my art, mm -hmm. and so I can also teach people how to do that. So it's part of teaching them how sustainability. It's okay. You can plan your own taro. You can make your own pa Yeah. You can make your own poi. You can feed your family. So you use your art as a metaphor, as example of what to do. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, to me, this is my connection and uh, with my culture and also uh, helps me make a lot of sense of everything. <laughs> wow, wow. That's great. And Hanalei, that's where we've got to leave it today. Mahalo for being on Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. You know, it's, it's wonderful. Please keep doing what you're doing. And I'm sure when we come back and visit you in a while, this is going to be a lot of improvements here. It's going to be really great. Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us today out of beautiful Hawaii. And I remember you can watch Voices of Truth on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com. And you can visit Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future on Facebook. I'm Ehuke Kahu Cardwell along with Hanalei here. And until next time, ahui ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.